welcome back, everyone, uh, to the always interesting and worthwhile world of Emacs here. Uh, so today I'm not just talking about Emacs, I'm talking about uh, open source software in general. I was thinking, if you've decided to make the plunge into switching off of something like Mac OS or Windows, and you want to get comfortable in the Linux world, there's lots of different ways to do it. And I'm particularly talking uh, to writers and creative people today, anybody who, who writes long documents, I would recommend learning Emacs, uh, the text editor, uh, but there's also what I'm in here, LibreOffice Writer, which will most likely come with the Linux distribution that you install. And this is a great program. It does a lot of the things that you need to do if you're if you're writing a document. You can format your text. You can you can print it. You can you know do all the things that you would do in Microsoft Word or some of these other programs, uh, Apple Pages and things like that. So it's a very good tool. But on the other side, Emacs has something called Org Mode, which is a uh, a very popular program that has a lot of additional features in it. Uh, the downside is that it's a little more difficult to learn how to use. Uh, you've got my videos, you've got lots of other great tutorials online, so you've got a lot of help in terms of getting to know this uh, this software well. But the question is, well, if, if LibreOffice Writer does everything that you need it to do, then why would you want to spend the time uh, learning Emacs or one of these other tools? Uh, are they going to justify the amount of effort you're going to put into them. So the question I asked is, you know, for somebody who is interested but hasn't really taken the plunge yet, is there anything that org mode can do better? So yes, you can you can do the same things. Let's say you need to get this document into standard manuscript format, let's say, because you're going to submit it to a, a magazine or something. You could do everything you need to do. You could you could highlight these areas and you can put them in the right font. You could put in the right margins or you could have org mode just send it to standard manuscript format and all the formatting is done for you. Does org mode do that better? Well, I'll say yes, and I'll show you some uh, some reasons why. OK, so I have now just opened up the same document I was working in in LibreOffice in org mode here. And uh, the reason you know it's in org mode is because it says org down here. Uh, that indicates that you're in the correct mode and the file ends with a .org extension. So as I was saying, you can get this to standard manuscript format and everything you, you need it to do right from org mode. But why would you want to bother you know, learning how to do that? Org mode is not just a, a system for writing a document. It's also a, a syntax. It's a way of writing. You can isolate parts of your document uh, with more control and understanding what's going on. So if, if you wanted to put all of this uh, second paragraph into a quote, you could open up a quote block here and just copy, you know, copy this section into it. And now that's a quote block. So what does it actually mean to be in a quote block? Well, that depends on on the the output and how it's, it's formatted on the other side. So, you know, like HP Lovecraft had large sections of his stories that were a report from a letter or a, so the person telling the story pauses and then it goes into somebody's long uh, recitation uh, from their their letter or their report or something they wrote. So if you wanted to isolate different sections of your story like that and be able to quickly switch between them and know what's going on. It lets you do that with some more control. So you don't have to necessarily go into LibreOffice and format it and think, well, you know, should I should I center that or should I indent it or what I should do? You can determine all of that later and you can just use these um, these different types of, of syntax to isolate things the way you want. And of course, you know, if you wanted to italicize something, you don't have to, you know, highlight it and look for a button to click uh, italicize. You just do uh, these forward slashes, and then that indicates that that is something that you want to be emphasized. Uh, alternatively, you could put in uh, these underscores to indicate that you want that to be underlined. But you get to start to see the big picture conceptually is that these don't have to indicate underlining or emphasizing. You could have them do something else on the back end once you've exported it. So yeah, those are the default behaviors, but you can customize all of this. So you start to see that it gives you a level of flexibility and freedom, or I guess I'd rather say control over your text output 
than what other programs can give you. And also one of the, the biggest benefits of writing with plain text in general, but Emacs uh, in particular, I'd say, is that it gets you to think in terms of structure, not just, you know, just, just writing and, and getting out uh, whatever uh, feelings or emotions or, or, or uh, you know, what you're trying to express. While that's important, thinking about how the story is structured or the, the pace of your document, how you've got things organized, will allow you to be much more effective, whether you're trying to persuade the reader to, to think a certain thing or to focus on one element uh, in particular, you can really just go go wild as far as the, the sky being the limit, as far as what you can do in terms of how you want to structure the document and have it structured in the most optimal way. For example, I'm just going to put in the, you know, the, the title here and you can put in your author information. And now when I'm thinking in, in terms of structure, so in org mode, you have you have headings, right? So this is heading level one. But you can also have multiple levels all the way down. You know, you could have five or six levels if you needed, because org mode is basically an outlining tool. So that that was how it started. So what it allows you to do is merge outlining and writing at the same time. So if you like to just write and write and write and you don't want to start with an outline, you don't have to. You can do that. You can just get all your thoughts down, uh, do like a sort of a writing into the dark or whatever you want to call it. And then you haven't actually closed off your option for outlining. You can always go back at any time and give your give a sense of organization to the writing after you're you've, you're cooled off or you might be in in sort of like a, a line editing mode or you're just you're thinking more structurally about your story one of the things that a lot of uh, amateur writers will underestimate and i know because I, I did too was the importance of structural editing structural editing is when you look at what you've written and you see how it's functioning in a structural way and like i said org mode has multiple levels of structure that you can apply so it allows you to take the structure that you want to bring forth and put it into a framework that's that's already set up for you so so for example if i looking at if i'm looking at these three paragraphs here i can actually go in and start to think okay what is this first paragraph about it says you know in an upper room of an unoccupied dwelling in the part of san francisco okay it sounds like you know this is this is setting up the the scene so I could put something up here like setting up the scene. And you see there's factual details of description, uh, visual details. Uh, the weather was warm. The two windows, contrary to the custom which gives the dead plenty of air, were closed and the blinds drawn down. So you're, you're, giving, some, you're giving some different clues here. And org mode has uh, some structures that are known as tags. So you can actually say, okay, in this paragraph, I am providing some visual details. So I could, I could say, tag this visual. And I can leave sort of breadcrumbs for myself. Uh, you know, I could also say factual. So I'm giving some factual and visual details about the setting. I'm actually now, for myself, I am marking up this paragraph and leaving notes for myself this is what this paragraph is about. This paragraph is providing some visual and factual details about the room that the the, the scene is, is taking place in, and it's setting up maybe things that will happen later in the story. And uh, so you might think, well, this seems like uh, like too granular. This takes all the fun out of it. Well, ideally, you can do this at any point of the writing process. So you don't lose the spontaneity and creativity. Let's say your your muse has got you going that day. You can write to your heart's content and you don't have to worry about any of these structures or think about any of this. And you can go back later and do it after the fact. And there's another structure, which are, are basically comments. So you can actually leave comments for yourself that will not be seen. They will not be exported. They'll just be basically ignored by the editor when you when you send this out. And by the editor, I mean the program, a Emacs, the text editor. So you could say, um, this scene is important because it describes the room. And I use sense details to set up the scene. Now, yeah, you don't have to write all of that, but this is just another structure that is there 
again, so you can kind of leave some breadcrumbs behind for yourself and understand what's going on. And then now, as I go down to the second paragraph, I can see as the neighboring church clock was striking nine with an indolence which seemed to imply such an indifference to the flight of time that one could hardly help wondering why it took the, str the trouble to strike at all. The single door of the room was opened and a man entered, advancing toward the body. So now, when I read that, I'm thinking, okay, so I, I presumably, yeah, this is not a story that, that, that I wrote, but if I did write this, I'm coming in after the the heat of composition and I'm I'm doing a structural edit. I can start to think to myself, okay, um this is what I wrote, but you know, sometimes when you're when you're when you're inspired in your writing, you may it, you may not be thinking completely logically and intellectually about what's at at stake here and what's happening. So now I can see, okay, the 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 church clock strikes. So what that's telling me is that that's indicating a passage of time. So like uh, one of the important aspects of a story is that you have a narrative happening across time. It's important at many points of the story to indicate the, the passage of time, whether it's just from beginning, middle to end, or if a character is going through a, a progression. So I might put for this paragraph here, uh, clock strikes. Man enters. Now, of course, I presumably know who that man is, but, um, you know, in, in this case... Um, I, I'm not familiar with a lot of the details of this story, so um, I'm just kind of improvising here. And then I could tag this. Whoops. I could open up a tag and, uh, you know, I could tag this time. So now that's indicating to me that um, just at a glance, you know, whether I have this document folded or whether I, I have it open, I can see that I tagged this as time to indicate that that is the, that is the element I'm employing here to influence the reader or to, or that's what I'm having them pay attention to. All this can be helpful as you are like structurally editing your document and making sure that it's um, it's all laid out the way you want. And again, this style of editing may not be something that that interests you and you certainly don't have to do it, but this is just an example of uh, of some of the things that you can do even if it seems like physically laborious to mark each paragraph this way. Um, I think this is this is something that helps me, and um, it could be it could be of use to you as well. And uh, in this paragraph here, I see uh, under the sheet, the outlines of the body could be traced, even the features. These having that naturally sharp definition, which seems to belong to the faces of the dead. So um, now I could see well that that paragraph here is introducing the body. So introducing that that. Uh, this person is sitting in a room and there is a body under a sheet. So again, you know, you don't have to tag these, but I could say, you know, factual. This paragraph is providing more factual detail about what's happening in the story. And all of these are important elements for a story, obviously. And so now that I've, I've kind of gone through each paragraph and I've marked and given myself some thoughts about what uh, is happening in them. So let's say I, I actually export this. Now, so just for an example, I'll, I'll go back into LibreOffice where we were before. So now I've exported it into a document. I, you, you don't want these in your story if you're going to print it and send it out to an editor or someone. Um, so we can get rid of all this stuff. We don't have to, to see this table of contents. We can actually change all of that. So don't think that this is what your final document is going to look like. It doesn't even have to be formatted this way. Um, I've got videos that show you how you can format this output in uh, many different ways. But what I wanted to indicate here is that you can see all this stuff in here. If you wanted to print this and read it and remember what notes you made for yourself, I think you know it's good to show you that, that you can do that. But let's go ahead and go back and we can actually get rid of this stuff. So one of the nice things about org mode is that um, if you install um, an additional package uh, called org contribs, I have a video about how to do that, you can actually put another tag on here called ignore. So if you put the ignore tag on each one of these uh, these sections here, I'll show you what's going to happen. But before we before we do the export again, I'm just going to put toc nil. That's going to exclude the table of contents from the export. So now let's go ahead and and do the export again. All right. So now this is starting to look uh, a little bit cleaner, and uh, so you can see that the the titles that I put over each paragraph those were were section headings. Those are excluded now. And of course, you can include section headings if you want. Any heading that you have that you didn't put the ignore tag on will be included. So 
again, this is giving you more granular control over what you're including in the final export of your document. What that shows you is I was telling you about thinking in structure. So you can apply a very rigorous structure to your document, but then not have to be uh, married to it in terms of what the final outlook is going to be. Because yeah, obviously you don't want your reader seeing your, your tags, your comments, or any of these things. If you printed this and sent it to a friend or an editor, they can actually just read your document and get swept up in it, having no idea of the, the, the crazy lattice work that you put in to structure it in this very optimal way that will influence them or get them to remember certain parts of the story that you want them to, pay attention to what you want them to, and really guide them through the narrative in the way that you determine is best. So that's it. I just wanted to show you a, a few things there on um, why I think org mode does do a lot of things better than, than just uh, a, a Google Doc or writing in LibreOffice. You can, get, you can do some things that you really can't do anywhere else, and that's the, the point I wanted to get across here. So obviously, if org mode didn't do anything better, there wouldn't be you know, much of a reason for, for learning Emacs or org mode to begin with. But uh, I think I've demonstrated there that it does do some pretty impressive things. So if you wanted to use it, you can give it a try. And uh, I've got plenty of other videos here that you can watch uh, to get started. And there's lots of other good ones out there. But that's about it. I'm going to leave it there. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them below. And of course, uh, like and subscribe, because uh, I am going to have some other videos coming subsequently that are going to go into more depth on, uh, on how uh, you can optimize writing uh, in org mode or elsewhere. And uh, you might uh, want to catch those as well when they come out. So there you go. I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.